Welcome back, everybody. This is our video solution to problem five from quiz 12, fall 2023, math 307, linear algebra at Cal State Fullerton. In this problem, we're given a four by four matrix, one, zero, 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 one, zero, zero, two, zero, one, zero, four, zero, negative three. We're asked to compute the determinant of this matrix using the permutation characterization of the determinant. So we're not finding eigenvalues this time. Uh, we're not going to use you know, some uh, adjunct matrix, anything like this. We're just going to view this with permutations. So uh, in the permutation characterization, what we have to do is in all possible ways, choose one element from each row and each column. Okay, so for example, I could choose the zero from here. Uh, I could choose the one from there. Now I can only choose right either this zero or this one. So let's say I choose this one and now there's only one choice left because I want to make sure I have exactly one choice from each row and each column. I then multiply these together, which in this case is going to give me zero. Now there's a, a little tweak to this number, which won't matter in this case because it's zero, but you have to either assign this number a positive one or a negative one. That's called the sign of the permutation. So uh, we're going to have to keep that in mind as we go. But for now, like you notice, as soon as I choose a zero as one of the numbers, when I multiply it, it doesn't matter, right? What I choose for all the other ones, I'm going to get zero, which means if we want to make sure we actually get something non-zero, the only way we can do that is we have to choose a one from this first row and we're going to have to choose a one from this second row. All the other <laughs> numbers are zero. Now, when I get into the third and fourth rows, there are some options. So for example, I could choose this two, and then of course I would have to choose this negative three. Alternatively, I could have chosen this one, and then I would have to choose this four from the bottom row. All right, so those are, it turns out, are the only possible ways of getting something non-zero. So let's make a little chart. So I'm gonna write down the permutation that I chose. I'll write down this sign. Okay, so we'll explain how to get the sign. I'll write down the product. And then we use all that to get sort of a partial uh, part of the determinant. All right, so this will be a partial sum end of the determinant. And then when we get all these, of course, there's only going to be two of them, we can compute the total, right, which is going to be the determinant of our matrix. Right, we didn't give it a name, so we'll just say determinant of the matrix. Okay, so first, when we did uh, one and one here, let's see. This means I've chosen the first column for the first row, the third column for the second row. Now let's do the blue one. I chose the second column for the third row and then the fourth column for the final row. Uh, if I do the green, then I'm still choosing the one and the three columns, but now for the third row, I've chosen the fourth column, and for the fourth row, I've chosen the second column. All right, now how do we get the, the sign of these permutations? Well, there's multiple ways you could do this. Uh, the way I'm going to simply do it is say, well, how many times would I have to swap numbers in order to get back to one, two, three, four? And if that's an odd number, then the sign will be negative one. And if it's an even number, then the sign will be positive one. So in this case, all I would have to do is swap the numbers two and three. Then I would get one, two, three, four. That's a single swap. That's an odd number. And so I'm going to get a minus one for the sign. All right, what about one, three, four, two? Well, I could swap the two and the three. And now I have the two in the correct place. But then I would need to swap again, the four and the, the, now the three would be in the last position. So it's gonna require two swaps. That's an even number. And so I'd get a sign of plus one. Okay, now let's compute the products. So in both cases, I'll have one times one. That's not gonna give me anything but one. Uh, in the blue one, I'll have two times negative three, which is negative six. And in the green version, I'll have four times one, which will give me four. Okay, I now multiply the sign by the product. So negative one by negative six is six. Uh, one times four is equal to four. And then the determinant will be the sum of these. All right, so we'll take the sum and six plus four is equal to 10. 
and therefore the determinant of my matrix is 10. All right, everybody, have a wonderful day.